Karen Bryant for MMA Heat. I'm speaking with Joel Resnick. He's the CEO of Rough. That's the RANIC Ultimate Fighting Federation based out of China. And uh, Joel, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. And uh, I'm just first and foremost want to say congratulations on what you're doing with your organization so far. Thank you very much. Uh, it, it's been a it's been a long haul, um, but Rough is growing. We're getting close to our championship fight, which will be in February. Uh, we have Rough Six coming up November third in Inner Mongolia and Huvuatu. Um Then Rough Seven, and then the Super Fight, and that's where we're going to give out five China National MMA Championship belts yeah. and prizes of one million RMB uh, to each of the winners. Which, with the way the U.S. dollar is going right now, it's around one hundred and seventy thousand U.S. dollars. Not bad. So, forward to that. Absolutely. Well, and I have to say, we here at MMA Heat have, you know, it's really been a privilege to, to work with you guys and sponsor some of the fights and talk to the fighters because for us, showing the global expansion of MMA and helping helping you grow and helping us grow there, it's just all good. So we're loving it. Listen, it, it, it's a huge opportunity for MMA in general. Yeah. Um, we're just, we're happy to be associated with, with people like you. Um, there's a lot of people out there that aren't so great, um, but like any industry, that's what happens. Right. But here, we found some great people to work with, and we're really happy about it. Good. Well, unfortunately, though, we do need to talk about something. You've had a basically a change in the lineup. Um, you've had to let a fighter go, and I want to talk about that, and if you could tell us what happened and, and why that came about. Well, basically, one of our top fighters at uh, 70 kilos, uh, John Lee Pong, was at a gym for four or five years uh, at Al Hai Lin's Fighting Club. And Al Hai Lin's been around for years and years and years here in China with, with MMA and with Sanda. He left there and he went to a club called the Fighting Empire Gym, which is a new gym. And it's managed or run by a guy named uh, Jung Hua. Everybody told us we got to be careful now. We didn't listen. We said, it's okay. We have contracts signed. All of our contracts are signed with the fighters. The contracts are done in Chinese by a Chinese lawyer through Chinese, through Chinese law. Very transparent. They're not big, huge, long contracts. They're direct to the point. They cover the fighter. They cover the promotion. Everybody's happy with it. Nobody's forced to sign anything. Um, one of the clauses in the contract is that when they sign with us, it's an exclusive, and they have to fight for us, unless it's a national Sanda tournament, something to do with the national team. Then it's a different story, then they can fight. Anything to do with the national team, for sure, obviously, that comes first. Um, when we, we, we tried all week long, really, to explain to him. He, he was really two fights away from the super fight. He's done well. He hasn't done great, but, you know, Rodrigo has obviously beaten everybody. But he went full three rounds with Rodrigo, which nobody else has. He had the huge opportunity, and he signed a contract with us. Um, it's one of those things. Here, it's a new sport, and now you're getting a lot of people that are coming in saying they're managers. And they're maybe not looking out for the athletes the way managers should. With that being said, hang on, I gotta say something else. There's a lot of clubs here, and there's a lot of managers, and there's a lot of coaches that really do look out for their athletes. So when you have K1 Club, we've got a lot of their fighters uh, with Mr. Wuxing running that. Got Al Lin's gym. You've got Andy Bacteria, here, who's Rodrigo and Earshad's manager out of Hong Kong. They're great, they look out for their guys. I mean, even as far as John Lee Pung goes, his coaches. I mean, he's got a couple coaches that are here from Russia. Uh, Jalil and Alexander, they they look out for him. They really do a great job. But you're always going to run into that element where they control a lot of things and they don't necessarily do it properly. So he they they told him basically they advised him to take fights that were obviously out of the contract and maybe also not completely legitimate. Whereas you guys are obviously a very well run and government-sanctioned organization, some of the things he was doing were a little iffy. That's exactly what happened. Um, the fight was promoted on Wednesday. We heard about it. We contacted him immediately. He said he didn't have a choice. He had to fight. His boss, the exact words were my boss. says, I have to follow what my boss says. And 
this shouldn't happen. To, to make things worse, he ended up losing this fight. So now he's out of rough. Right. He lost the fight. This is a 22-year-old kid that has huge potential. But what we're trying to do here, you know, to be a professional, you know this more than anybody, to be a professional athlete, you have to be on top of your sport. Right. But you also have to have your credibility. You have to have your honor. You sign contracts, deal with them. You need to do that. And that's really what we're trying to show everybody here, that the contracts mean something. The contracts that work both ways. They protect the fighter. They protect the promotion. And that's how the proper contracts are supposed to be. So we had no choice. We, you know, we had to cut them loose. It's, and it's really, really unfortunate. And personally for me, bothers me a lot. John Lee Pong has huge potential. And now anybody that's going to sign a contract with him, they're going to have to think twice if he's still with this Fighting Empire gym and if he's still with this uh, John, John Watt. I mean, it, it's, you can't control people like that. And athletes have to realize they're responsible for themselves here. Well, and certainly, you know, you can, I'm sure, find a fighter to, you know, fill his slot in, in your tournament. But I would imagine, too, that you, you know, not only you're frustrated that you've lost your fighter, but you got to also feel bad. You know, I know this from working in boxing, and I've seen young guys get taken advantage of by bad managers. And I'm sure I know a part of you, not that you're necessarily feeling paternal toward them, but that, yeah, you want to help educate these guys. To, to do the right thing and to watch out for these kind of, you know, sketchy, sketchy figures. Well, that's the whole thing here. It's such a new sport here. And it's never really had a good reputation. Yeah. People look at China a completely different way. than, But China's really not like that. That's why I said there's so many great gyms, great managers, people that are really committed to growing the sport. There's Coach Zhao at Xi'an Sports University. who He's one of the pioneers out here. You know, Al Hai Lin, he's one of the pioneer fighters. Um, everybody. K1 Jim and Tanjin, the guy just does it because he loves the sport and loves the fighters. And that's really what we're trying to get at here. We're giving everybody an opportunity. You want to be a professional fighter? Here's your opportunity. You know, we're going to give you money. You can, you can make some money. You can be China's first national champion. You can be part of building a sport. You're, build, you're building something brand new. You're building a whole league. It's really, it's exciting. Well, speaking with some of your fighters before, it was great because they're, they're, they're so enthusiastic. And, I, you know, to me, it's just, it's, it's great. I really want to see them do great things. They're still so humble and wide-eyed. And, you know, it's, it's, it really is great. That's the thing. These, these guys, the, some of the greatest athletes I've ever seen. I mean, they're, they're natural-born athletes but they're still naive when it comes to the sports business. And really everybody here is, everybody in China, it's a new business here. I mean, it, it, it's something that they need to be taught and they need to be taught properly and they need to understand, which, which most of them do. You sign a contract, that's your honor. And honor in China is such a huge, huge thing, especially with these fighters. You saw, I mean, they're young yeah. and they're eager and they want to do, and they, they really want to do the right thing. They want to be professional. So we're hoping it's going to get better. This whole thing with John Lee Pong, I, I hope it works out. I'm sure somebody, another organization is definitely going to pick him up. Mm -hmm. He's got talent. And, you know, all you can say is we'll just keep doing what we're doing over here. We're going to keep trying to educate them. Um, the managers are getting better. The fighters are getting better. The judges are getting better. I hope we're getting better. And it's new for all of us. Well, as you are sort of the Dana White of Chinese MMA, I'm going to give you an opportunity now to... I think, to me, that's, that's a very high compliment. The man has done a lot for the sport. So talk to me about your upcoming event then. Give me a little what? hype. Give, give me a little bit of flavor about what's coming up in, uh, in Rough Six. Now it's getting really exciting because now say we have Rough Six and Rough Seven and then we're on to the super fight. Rough Six is going to weed out a lot of people. There's, there's a few fights that are coming up where... Whoever wins, chances are that they're, they're going to go to the super fight. Nice. Um, nice. It'll be November 3rd, back in Inner Mongolia again. Um, really, Inner Mongolia has been building up and building up. They support us great out there. We have Rough 7 coming up. Uh, that's already planned and done. That'll be in uh, Nanjing, which is in Jiangsu province, December 22nd. And that's the final one right before. So that's going to be... 
really exciting. It looks looks now like the super fight will be beginning of February, right before Chinese New Year, nice. and we're going to save that announcement for later on because that that's a pretty big deal. Uh, we also have our reality TV show, which is just about finished filming now. Yeah, like we have seven episodes done. It's going to be ten episodes. That'll start airing uh, towards the end of November. Mm -hmm. uh, one episode a week, thirty minutes each episode. Now it's not. A reality show that you think you guys have in North America where you put a couple guys in a house, a bunch of guys in a house. Yeah. yeah. This is more of a documentary to, okay. to really teach people what these fighters, how they train, what they have to do, how they became fighters, their life stories, where, where they came from. We want people to realize that these are regular Chinese kids. Yeah. There was nothing special. All that was special about them is that they had the drive and they had the dream to really become champions. You know, not everybody here is like Yao Ming at seven feet tall and yeah. can play basketball. <laughs> so th this is actually really China's the home of martial arts. So we're really looking for big things from that. Well, that's great. And obviously, so far, you've already been very successful. If you, you know, Dana loves to give the numbers uh, on how successful a pay per view is. So let's, why don't, you, why, don't you, why don't you educate the people on just how many, how many households and how many people are watching your events? Because it's, it's a pretty ridiculously great number. Yeah, it, it's funny over here because the numbers are so much different than North America. Yeah. Um, our last fight, uh, Rough Five, was the first time ever that the government's allowed it live on television. So we had it on two networks, two or three networks, and I think our total viewers were around 1.8 million people watched that's, it live. That's great. But the day before, it was aired on uh, Chongqing Satellite, yeah. and along with I think four other networks aired it, and 4.8 million people watched it on television. That's um, seven, it looks like we are going to be live nationally on satellite, um, which is a huge thing over here because it's never been allowed before. That will give the potential viewing audience of 1.3 billion people. I know the, number, the numbers are crazy, but... And you got to understand, fighting over here is a huge thing. I mean, they love it, it's especially yeah. martial arts. I mean, this is the home. This is it. Right. And, it's, and once they turn on the TV and once they've watched it for a couple of minutes, they were like, my God, this this, this is the real deal. Right, this right. Is it. And we've got them. So it, it's really, we've seen it just growing like this and yeah. like this all the time. And to be associated with, you know, people like MMA Heat and, it, it's it's fantastic. It really we're working hard at it. We bring you know Jaron Villal from Command in mm -hmm. to referee every fight. He's coming back again. Um, we just want to make sure it, it's safe for the fighters and everybody's doing well. And we build the sport. So really, that's it. Well, I tell you, we're looking forward to the to the time when we can come over there and cover one in person because I just think it'd be terrific. And you know, I haven't. I, I, it, <laughs> Just to see it firsthand, and I think would just be terrific. I just, uh, I really, you know, wish you continued success, and uh, you know, want to make sure we keep our dialogue going. And you're going to give me some of your fighters, right, to speak to before the event. Perfect. We will. Right. Thursday, I try and set something up. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you very much. And we'll talk to you okay. soon.